Good evening, everybody. Uh, I assume it's evening, depending on where you're at. Uh, if you're on West Coast, and I'm on West Coast right now, sun's still shining. So uh, East Coast people, good evening to you. West Coast, you're getting there. So uh, today's topic is uh, how to increase your patient acceptance. Uh, but one of the ways we're going to do that is by moving those difficult teeth with clear aligners. And we're going to introduce mops and high frequency vibration to you tonight. I'm Rick Mars. I'll tell you a little bit about me more in a second. Just let's get the housekeeping out of the way. Got to do it. Here's my disclosure and the disclosure from Propel. You can read that to yourself. I promise not to bore you with that. Be a fast reader. Also, our disclaimer for today, okay, that I'm being compensated for tonight's event by Propel Orthodontics. And I get an honorarium for performing here tonight for you. And uh, we ask that you don't photograph, video, or audio record this, but we couldn't tell if you're doing it anyway. So there's your disclaimer. That's me. Uh, that's my home office in Miami, Florida. Um, I'm an aligned master faculty member. I'm also on their global faculty. I was honored to be their GP faculty member of the year. I have over 1,500 Invisalign starts. Went to Georgetown for dental school and Emory for undergrad. Uh, that's my office, that million dollars. That's That million is for a million dollars. That's what we've given away in free dentistry over the last eight years. And I'm very proud of that. So let's get to work. So the biggest deal here, um, one of the things that I want to get across that a lot of people don't talk about when we're talking about clear aligners is profitability. You know, everybody's going to tell you about attachment systems, how to move teeth, how to do these things, the different things you need to do, IPR, many different discussions when it comes to Invisalign and clear aligners. One of the things I like to talk about is profitability because there's nothing wrong with that. That's why we go to work at the end of the day. Um, this is just based on a national average, your fee may be above or below that, but this is just for discussion purposes to discuss profitability. Invisalign case fee, uh, including Vivera, averages about $5,800, depending on where you're at. Your aligner fee, $1,800, I know it's a little higher. Your Vivera fee, I know it's a little lower, but we ran that out to a total of $2,100. Gives you a net profit of $3,700. Case should take you two to three hours chair time, and that gives you approximately 1200 to about 1800 and change per hour in terms of profitability. No, we're not figuring in the cost of your insurance, your lights, your assistance, et cetera, et cetera. But that's going to happen with any procedure that you're doing. Those are fixed costs that are already there. Now, let's happen. what happens if you get into a little bit of trouble? Your case doesn't complete on time. And you have to do additional liners, which used to be known as refinement. Case fee doesn't change. A liner fee doesn't change from Invisalign. Bavera fee doesn't change, your lab bill total doesn't change, your net profit stays the same, but the big difference that you can see is the case now takes almost double, four to five hours, and that knocks down your profitability. So the big thing that I they stress when I talk to doctors is this is one of the biggest things that people gloss over when they're talking about Invisalign and profitability. It should be the most profitable thing in your office, but it's vital, vital that you understand you should do everything in your power to avoid refinements or additional liners. So time is money. You know, we hear about lab bills. People want to close cases at all costs. They want to get that status with Invisalign. They want to be gold or platinum or platinum plus. So they'll discount their cases. I mean, people have done Groupon. They'll run all kinds of specials, things like that. And then they'll start focusing on other things when it comes to cost. You know, I, I've heard more talk about doctors being upset every single time Invisalign raises their lab bill, and they're not focusing on the back door, only on that lab bill on the front end. They have no idea what they're paying for crowns. They have no idea what they're paying for other procedures, their costs in their office, a tube of composite or a carpula composite, or what their cements cost. But they know the Invisalign lab bill because every time you submit a case, it's right there in front of your face. So we're focusing on money, but maybe not exactly where we need to be. The other thing we have to do is, we're faced with those tough moves. You know, how do we rotate that mandibular incisor? Or we're trying to extrude a canine. We're going for that blue move, which is a moderate move with Invisalign when we're looking at our tooth movement assessment. Or maybe we're going after a real challenging move, a black move or an advanced move. This is something that we can figure out where we're scratching our head. We're going, oh, we're just going to keep doing more aligners and more aligners. I'm not paying for aligners. I get all the refinements I need within five years. So let me keep doing that. And that's where doctors make some of their biggest mistakes is they're trying to figure out those tough moves, but they're going about it the wrong way. So time is money, we all know that. So if 
where should your focus be then? I'm telling you where it shouldn't be. So where should your focus be? And the answer is very clear. Your focus should be on finishing. I always joke when I do a business line, I say I've done over 1500K starts, but I've only just done six finishes. Now, obviously that's a joke, but it's kind of funny when you think about it. It doesn't matter how many starts you've done. If you're bogged down in cases that are taking you three or four times to refine a case, and you're not figuring out what's happening there, the patient tells you they're compliant, and they're pushing and telling you that I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, doctor. You can't tell me. I, 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 I wear these things 26 hours a day, Dr. Mars. There's no way I could do anything more than I'm doing. I'm eating with them. I'm sleeping with them. I'm working in them. I'm doing everything I can do. Why aren't my teeth moving as they should? Well, when you can't figure out those cases, you need some help. And you need to finish those cases. That's the most important thing. Because those cases that you've done two refinements on, your profit is, is minuscule at that stage of the game. Three, three refinements on, you may have no profit left in that case. So it's important to finish and finish in a timely manner. So there's some critical differentiator, differentiators that we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about the patient experience and we're gonna talk about practice efficiency. And these are two things you need to think about every single time you're sitting down and you're doing a case. So I wanna knock down some of the obstacles that you've thought about earlier and heard about earlier about those tough moves and things like that. And that's really what we're gonna talk about with MOPS and high frequency vibration. So here's our challenges, okay? Patients talk about discomfort, they're non-compliant, that's the number one cause of the need to do additional liners or refinements. Teeth aren't tracking. There's not enough force of the aligner on that teeth. You have very dense bone, you have long bulbous roots. You need to do refinements. There's burnout in the case. Burnout by the patient, burnout by you. There's stubborn teeth teeth that have been previously treated with orthodontics, you have some pre-existing root resorption, retention relapse, and there's an increased competition out there. There's a lot of focus on there on who can come up with the next best, least expensive aligner system. Okay, that's a big focus out there today. You all have been inundated with it, with our aligners are almost as good as Invisalign or use our aligners for the easy cases, okay? and. I'm a big, big fan of, of doing it right and not cutting corners on the things that we know work and work well. Because too many people have gone to other companies and done other things and tried to do, do shortcuts. And in the end, they come back to what works tried and true. So uh, this uh, is actually something one of my patients first came in and uh, wanted to do it, use as a device to keep his aligners tracking for some difficult moves. Um, it was a class one division two case. I swear to you, I can't make this up. He actually cut up a piece of tire and put it in his mouth and used that to help keep his aligner seated. And um, I began to introduce him to V-Pro5 as a much better alternative. But uh, patients will do the craziest things and uh, he did some of the craziest things. People will do anything they can to make their cases more predictable, um, but let's use the things that work right. So let's look at some basic biology to get started. We all can remember back to our biology, our osteoblasts and our osteoclasts. When we're putting pressure on the side, osteoclasts kick in, that causes bone removal and allows teeth to move. On the opposing side, where the force is being applied, we have osteoblast proliferation. That causes bone formation. That's our basic biology that we learned way back when. And our teeth move very, very predictably towards that pressure side. So the science behind microosteoperforations or MOPs is well over 100 years old. Um, no, none of us were around for 100 years ago, but many of you have heard of Wilkodonics. Recently, we had a course down in South Florida or a local dental school teaching Wilkodonics. But in 2009, about 10 years ago, there were studies about MOPs and cytokine activities and Propel came aboard in 2010. There's over 600 peer-reviewed clinical trials, trials on perforation and cortico science, cortico autonomy science. And this is nothing new. The science is behind it. It's proven there. You can read about it. You will not be the first, but it is a tried and true tested method to assist in tooth movement. The natural biological response, a basic overview of it, basically shows that if you introduce an irritation that causes inflammation, and the irritation is the MOP or the high frequency vibration. 
That causes an inflammatory response, which results in cytokine formation, which are the precursors to osteoblasts and osteoclasts, and that results in bone remodeling and tooth movement. That's what it looks like amplified. Our goals are, and the targets that we're trying to hit when we do MOPS are, we want an increased cytokine level, but we want our bone density to go down with inflammation, and we want our rate of bone remodeling to go up. Along with that, our rate of tooth movement will also go up. So the name of the game is to lower your bone density, increase your cytokine activity, and that results in a higher rate of bone remodeling and tooth movement. It's easy and it's quick to perform. It's very much misunderstood. People think, oh, I'm just making a hole here. That's all I need to do is make a hole. I can use anything I want. Why do I have to use these, these devices by Propel? But MOPS is very, very different. It creates compressive stress and radiating micro cracks. And it's compression corticootomy, and that maximizes radiating micro fractures. And that doesn't happen with a high speed or anything else you're going to use. We're changing bone chemistry. And the way you want to look at it is just in a comparison to a burr is burrs are dangerous. They're dangerous to root anatomy. They cause heat. They cause surgical irritation. Irrigation is required rather. It's soft tissue trauma. A tissue, a tissue punch effect is required to prevent tissue wind, which basically is your tissue getting caught up in the high speed. It's not indicated when it comes to mops. It removes bones. There's no micro cracks involved. And I know a lot of you are doing it. I'm on a lot of chats. I go to when I'm teaching different classes, people come in and they say, why can't I use just a burr? I've gotten away with it. I haven't had a problem. Well, I'm going to give you a very bad analogy, but it's the best analogy I can think of. It's like somebody, God forbid, who gets behind the wheel when they've had something to drink, okay, and said, I've done that before. I've never had a problem. But the day they have a problem, the problem is huge. And the same thing goes when you pick up a handpiece and you introduce a burr into that alveolar bone and thinking you are going to stimulate that bone just like you will with Propel. All right, there is only one device, the first and only device that's been cleared by the FDA is Propel for use in micro osteoperforations. Look where you're looking to cut corners. Your focus needs to be on the right things. The focus should not be I'm saving dollars and I'm not spending money on high frequency vibration devices or Propel so I can do micro osteoperforations. I'm gonna just use my little burr that only cost me $2 to use. I'll use a really small burr. All good, except number one, you're really not doing what you need to do because you're not making that compression corticootomy. Okay, that's very, very important what you're doing. You're just not doing what you need to do when you use a burr, number one. And number two, when you get in trouble, the trouble's gonna be huge. It's gonna be hitting a root, it's gonna be an infection by a patient, it's gonna be something that you're gonna do that's coming down the road that's gonna bite you and you're gonna wish you never did it. This is being taught now in universities all around the country. It's being taught in every dental school in the state of Florida right now. It's part of curriculums and microosteoperforations is here, okay? Most residency programs are using it right now and it's very important that it becomes a very important tool in your toolbox if you're doing clear aligners and Invisalign. So here's some of the science behind it. Most of these are from the Journal of Orthodontics and Dentofacial Orthopedics. And basically they're looking at when you increase cytokine activities, bone density goes down. And it looks at three different groups here, a randomized group, a controlled group, and it looks at opposing sides. And basically when you, in, when you have an increase in cytokine activities, your bone density goes down and it results in accelerated bone remodeling. Mops are also very root protective. When we look at this case here, when we did MOPS in this case, there was a concern about root resorption on that tooth number 18. And you can see with MOPS, it was sound mechanics. The possibility and the reality of bone resorption did not occur because basically we, de we decreased bone density in this case. And therefore the tooth moved a lot easier, a lot smoother, and we didn't have to worry about any root resorption. As far as faster tooth movement goes, many of you started doing Almost all of you started doing two-week aligner changes. When we introduced MOPS initially, several years back, 
We went to one week aligner change very predictably. Now people are using MOPS with five day aligner changes. And basically what this study looked at is it looked at three different groups, just a straight ortho case. It looked with ortho with MOPS involved and it measured the opposing side and it showed a 60% increase in tooth movement when you introduce MOPS into the case. It's well differentiated pain-wise. There's no differentiation in terms of discomfort between patients that have MOPS and don't have MOPS. Afterwards, the pain and discomfort assessment for the control and experimental groups were basically the same. They were st statistically insignificant. Conclusion when it comes to MOPS, they're effective, they're well tolerated, they're safe and they, to involve, and they assist in accelerated tooth movements and they can reduce orthodontic treatment time by up to 60%. More importantly, going back to our first point, that's what the studies show, but they make your tooth movement more predictable. So the dollars that you're gonna invest in any of these devices we're talking about is significantly less than the dollars that you're gonna to have to invest or lose when you go into additional liners and refinements and in the increased time that's involved with teeth that are not moving predictably. As far as MOPs go, 30 minutes post-treatment, you essentially cannot see the sites, okay? These arrows are identifying six sites that were used with MOPs. Patients don't miss a meal with MOPs. It doesn't matter if you're doing four MOPs or 40 MOPs, patients tolerate them very, very well post-treatment. MOPs are targeted stimulation. They cause faster bone remodeling and orthodontic tooth movement. They protect the roots. It's a simple in-office treatment that doesn't require any patient compliance. You do the treatment, the patient has to wear their aligners, they don't have to do anything else, and it makes your treatment more predictable. That's my biggest message to you tonight. I'll say it over and over and over. We want more predictable treatments. We don't wanna get involved with refinement after refinement. When you get off this webinar tonight, just make a little list of the things that are involved when you have to do a refinement. If you're not paying for your scans, great. Your assistant time, your chair time, your electricity, everything else that reduces your profitability in that case, all the different things that kick in, the name of the game is to make your treatment more predictable, and that's what MOPS do for you. It could be the entire case if you choose to, or you can target a difficult tooth that's a difficult movement. If it's a moderate movement or advanced movement, it's up to you where you wanna place the MOPS. You have two different devices that you can essentially use. You can use a manual device, okay, where you have a handle and you pop the tip on, or a motorized device. Any of you that have used a motorized device will swear by it because it's faster, it's quicker, um, it's very easy to use, and you can do multiple, multiple sites in just a matter of minutes, nothing to worry about. For those of you who are just getting started, if you're more partial towards the manual device, there is nothing wrong. That's where we all start initially with it till you get comfortable doing it. But for multiple sites, you'll see it's much, much easier with the motorized device and it's an investment you'll wanna make down the road. Um, the, you have an open tip choice when you're using the manual device or a closed tip choice for protection. The closed tip has little markers on it so you can measure how deep you're going in and we'll talk about the depth of your MOP shortly, but both devices work equally well. So where do you do it? So basically a MOP will give you a six to 10 millimeter radius in terms of its effectiveness. So in the interradicular area in the mouth, you place the amount of MOPs that you need to put in place. The more MOPs you do, the better. More is better here because you're insulting it more. You're causing a decrease in bone density and increase in cytokine activity. And that's what we're looking to do. And the depth is very shallow. You just want to get in just through that cortical bone into that spongy bone. And that's all you need to do for to have an effective mop. Where and how many? If you're in the posterior area, one to two per space. Anterior area, two to three. 95% of your mops are only going to be three millimeters in depth. The only area that requires a greater depth is posterior premolar and molar area, the entire maxilla, three millimeters in depth, mandibular anterior teeth, three millimeters in depth. So 95% of the mops that you're placing are only going to be three millimeters deep. 
It's easy. You'll evaluate the area, you, mop it, you map out where you're gonna place your mops, you do two one-minute chlorhexidine rinses, and you anesthetize the patient well, not with just a topical. You infiltrate the area or put a block in the area, get the patient very numb. You don't want them to feel a thing because they're not gonna feel anything essentially when the anesthesia wears off, so you don't want them to feel anything during the procedure. And then you go to work and you place your mops in those targeted areas based on your treatment plan. Very important, Any for even if you're not doing mops, you never want your patients taking uh, NSAIDs or aspirin during their Invisalign treatment, especially during mops. You only want your patients taking Tylenol or extra strength Tylenol. What does this do? This counteracts the cytokine activity. So you never want your patients for any Invisalign treatment whatsoever, taking Advil, Aleve, Aspirin. Tylenol is the painkiller of choice, but that's especially true when you have mops involved. Basically, post-treatment, if they feel anything at all, it's gonna be very similar to an orthodontic adjustment or when they're putting a new aligner on. The pain following treatment with mops, believe it or not, is minimal. You'll call your patients at night after treatment and most of them will tell you, I feel absolutely great, didn't even know you were there. So let's take a look at a, a MOP study that I did not so long ago. There's a 43-year-old male. You're gonna see some close-up pictures shortly. This is a case when I first got started, I was shaking my head going, hmm, not sure if I should do this case or not. This looks very, very difficult, but the patient was very desperate. Um, I knew he wasn't gonna even consider orthodontics, but he has a very, very narrow shape, V-shaped arch, severe crowding, his midline was off, Two size discrepancy from dental restorations. This is an Invisalign case. This is one mop application, 24 aligners. You can see the difference from his start picture on his left to the difference in his face on his right, the amount of tooth movement that was involved in the case. When you look close up, yes, we whitened his teeth too. <laughs> when you look close up, okay, he was essentially in posterior crossbite, crowding edge to edge in the anterior, we did two extractions in this case. We took out tooth number four and tooth number 29. But look how narrow the arch is to start. Look at the arch on the right side following treatment, the maxillary arch and the mandibular arch on the bottom. Night and day. Patient could not have been happier. Nobody else was gonna to touch us. Nobody else was gonna do this case. Mops made this case predictable. No refinements in the case, 24 aligners, in and out the door six months. This is what the ClinCheck look like. And he's all set up to do that implant on the lower left. He's going through that treatment right now. But this is textbook for me, a case I would never would have considered without Propel. Made it more predictable gave us great results, patients thrilled. Yes, there's perio treatment involved. We have some grafting involved afterwards that was there from the start, but this was an untreatable case without Propel. So now let's take a look at as an alternative, high frequency vibration, often referred to and in the slides as HFV. So let's take a look at vibrational force and let's look at what has worked and what hasn't worked previously. And basically, what hasn't worked is low frequency vibration or putting the wrong orthodontic force on the teeth. High frequency vibration, which is provided with VPRO5, is a very, very predictable and studies have showed successful tool to use to assist in orthodontic tooth movement. Here's the studies on improved bone quality, high versus low vibration, extraction healing, accelerated tooth movement, Head-to-head -head cellular activity shows reduced refinements, reduced root resorption, reduced pain. There's so many benefits to high frequency vibration. Let's talk about that pink elephant in the move that room that I just mentioned previously. Some of you have heard of or used previously Excelident, and basically Excelident was not as successful as VPRO5. VPRO5 is 70% greater peak accelerations created 
because it uses high frequency vibration. The acceleration or g-force is much greater and it makes your cases much, much more predictable. So V Pro 5 uses a completely different frequency and the difference between the two is striking as shown in the quote, in the quote above. There's a landmark trial and basically the landmark trial showed that there's a paradox involved. When you introduce high frequency vibration along with orthodontic movement or teeth that have a PDL under pressure, it causes a catabolic effect and a decrease in bone density. When you take that same high frequency vibration and introduce it on teeth with no orthodontic force, it has an opposing effect. It causes an increase in bone density. So once again, what this study showed, when you have orthodontic tooth movement and high frequency vibration, it gives us the effect that we want. An increase in cytoconnectivity, a decrease in bone density, softer bone, allowing for more predictable tooth movement. And when you use the opposite, you get the opposite effect when you introduce high frequency vibration and no orthodontic tooth movement. So that increases bone density. So for our purposes, while we're moving teeth, and a patient's in an aligner, if they're wearing an aligner, we introduce high frequency vibration, it's going to decrease bone density and give us the effect we want. Now, think about that for a second. What happens at the end of the case if we have maybe some mobility in the teeth, which we know will tighten up at the end of time, when we have that osteoblast and osteoclast activity, that osteoblast filling in that bone at the end, but if we introduce high frequency vibration and no forces on the teeth, that will increase your bone density and cause those teeth to tighten up at the end of treatment. So your high frequency vibration used during treatment will decrease bone density. And at the end of treatment, while you want those teeth to solidify and stay in place, it's gonna give us the opposite effect. It's gonna give us an increase in bone density and mineralization and new bone. And we're gonna be in a much better situation once our cases are complete. Basically, this is a study that shows the same thing, okay? When you introduce high frequency vibration, okay? On the far right, that's gonna cause a decrease in bone density when your control group and your orthodontic tooth movement alone are essentially the same when it comes to bone density. When you introduce high frequency vibration into the case, bone density goes down and makes your tooth movement more predictable or accelerates your tooth movement. Increased bone density without orthodontic force is what we showed you earlier on that landmark study. When you have bone density, bone density increase when there's no orthodontic force put on the teeth. So these are just further studies reiterating the same fact that if you have no orthodontic force being put on the tooth and high frequency vibration involved, bone density is going to go up. Also showing you the difference between low frequency vibration and high frequency vibration, the study in terms of the percent change in bone volume, high frequency, high frequency in this study shows it's much, much more effective. As far as aligner accuracy goes, you can see the most predictable aligner accuracy measurement is shown in a patient on seven day aligner change with a VPRO5 introduced, high frequency vibration. That middle case there shows 90% tracking. If you introduce a case, with high frequency vibration. If you're doing 14 days alone, a liner change without any high frequency vibration, you're gonna get a lower predictability than you were if you introduce high frequency. It's only 6% in this case, but it's seven day aligner change and VPRO5, those cases go much, much, much faster. And as you can see on the far right, if you're doing five day aligner change, it's the same thing as doing 14 day aligner change as far as predictability when you introduce a V Pro 5 into the case. A sham case is basically a device, just so you know for your arguments, those of you following the studies that I'm showing them, the sham is basically a device that has no vibration to it that patients used. So that's what the sham is involved in this case. So basically the most predictability in any case so far shown is if you have a seven day aligner change and high frequency vibration, it's very, very predictable in terms of your aligner accuracy. As far as discomfort goes, the least amount of discomfort wearing aligner shows a seven day aligner change and high frequency vibration combined gives you the least amount of discomfort 
when wearing the liners. Increase and prolonged osteoclast activity, VPRO5 groups significantly increased bone remodeling markers and cytokines versus the baseline control and sham. So again, another study showing high frequency vibration. The seven day gives you the best results and most predictability at the end of the day, the highest osteoclast activity. Minimize root resorption when we're looking at aligners alone versus aligners with a VPRO5. The least amount of root resorption is accomplished when you're using an aligner and VPRO5. And the aligner alone, and the aligners show very, very, very little root resorption. But if you have a case, and I have a case going right now that has some root resorption from previous ortho, I can go into the case with a lot more predictability and less fear of any further root resorption when I introduce a VPRO5 in the case. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to have the patient use the VPRO5. It's going to make my case more predictable in and out the door. And it's going to take my fear of root resorption away because I'm going to decrease bone density in the case and therefore make that tooth movement much, much more predictable because it's going to less dense bone. And I don't have to worry about the patient having any further resorption. As far as refinements go, basically in this study, it essentially showed with the VPRO5, the refinements were nothing. Now, there are other factors that come into play, have to be fair to each other and fair when we talk about these studies. Obviously, we need 100% compliance on the patient's part, but we all know we've had many, many, many patients that swear they're compliant, and we got to believe they're compliant, I mean, to, to a proven guilty, and we still have various numbers of refinements in the case. The best of the best of the best doctors are doing 25 to 35, 25 to 30 percent refinements. And many of you are doing, I've, I've met doctors that tell me they have a 100 percent refinement rate in their cases. And you need to get that number down. That number is affecting your profitability. That's making your dollars at the end of the day, the dollars in your pocket. When you look at what you're, what you're sticking in your bank account at the end of the month, your dollars are going way, way, way down because of these refinements. And you need every tool in your toolbox, vibration, mops, to reduce the amount of refinements that you have. That's the name of the game. We've got to finish at the end of the day. Reduce treatment time. People are changing aligners for, for a control group anywhere from 7 to 14 days still. When you're, wearing, when you're using high-frequency vibration, you can, can predictably change aligners in 7 days or even 5 days. So it reduces treatment time tremendously when you introduce high frequency vibration to the case. As far as aligner seating, you physically can see what's going on. A patient comes in and they had poor seating aligners. We introduced VPRO5 into the case. Two weeks later, we saw the case. The aligners are tracking predictably. Attachments could be put on the case. As far as what's going on biologically, we have stimulation going on in the bone, accelerated bone remodeling going on, and then we can get those teeth moving much, much more predictably. So right at the beginning of this case, this patient was getting in trouble. We introduced VPRO5, cases on track. A lot of patients will come in. If you've done enough cases, you're going to have patients come in that will say to you, I wear those aligners every single night, just like you directed me to, that Vivera. I never go to bed without it. And some of them are giving it to you straight, and some of it may not be giving it to you straight. That's not for us to worry about at the end of the day. What we need to worry about is we need to get them on track. So we can show you that absolutely you have a patient who basically has had poor retainer compliance in this case. We introduce VPRO5 into the case. We get the patient on track and you have a happy patient at the end of the day. So post-treatment, vibration can come into play and really help your patient get on track just it could be weeks, it could be months later, whatever it takes, but it's a lot less expensive than putting the patient back into Invisalign. It's a lot less expensive, even if, you, even if you're covered on the lab bill, to open up a case again and to do what you need to do. A year later, patients are not expecting you to, to guarantee their cases, but you will have patients walk in your door that say, I've had some tooth movement, what am I going to do? And VPRO5 is your answer to seeking those aligner weeks or maybe several months later, you can get your case back on track. So here's your device. It's a five minute wear time. It's easy to use. There is no pain. It is not vibrating all over their mouth. All right. It's just a very, very low, high frequency vibrate. It's a high frequency vibration, but it doesn't give the patient a sensation 
that their mouth is shaking all over the place, you know, very similar maybe to when a patient's putting their first electric toothbrush in their mouth. It's, it's even less than that. Um, it's very high compliance because you only have to do it five minutes a day. It's very simple to use. You turn the device on, put it in for five minutes, you're done. It's a wireless charging case, compact travel case, waterproof oscillator, so you don't have to worry about any of the parts damaging the device. And like everything else these days, there's an intuitive patient mobile app for orthodontic tooth movement that they can follow along and track if they want to. Um, the high frequency device gives you more predictable treatment, reduces pain, reduces or eliminates refinement, and it's faster bone remodeling and orthodontic tooth movement. Okay, you can do it in treatment and you can use it in retention. It's a great, great device that really can keep you out of trouble at the end of the day. These things act like insurance policies for you. All right, you want to make sure those teeth move. The aligners do it most of the time, but there are times that you know that it's a tough tooth movement. So what's the insurance policy you can take out so you know those aligners can be predictable? It's a V-Pro5, it's Propel, whichever one of those devices you choose to use, it's going to help you get the job done more predictably. Here's the device. I can read the long list of things for you. But remember, decreases bone density when you have an orthodontic force on it. After treatment, you can use the same device to basically increase bone density when you want to. It decreases refinements, increases the rate of tooth movement, cuts out your treatment time, makes tooth movement much more comfortable at the end of the day, and it minimizes root resorption. It'll help you seat the aligners. It's a superior performance over low frequency vibration like the Accelident and it helps you recapture patients that have non-compliance or patients that are having trouble during retention. If they have been non-compliant, we have to bring those teeth back into place. Here's the app, simple and easy to use. They can download it in the app store. They can follow along, they can track it and gives them a history of exactly what they did and it shows their compliance. So I show you this case here because this case is a case that you just have to think a little bit and sometimes you have to call all the bulls at the end of the day. And as you can see, there's a lot of crowding in this case. There are no extractions in this case. And there's a young lady, there's a 30 year old lady and she was set up to do Propel, maxillary mandibular. I really want to introduce as much stimulation, uh, inflammation to that bone as possible so we could soften it up and get predictable tooth movement but something happened along the way. And as I'll show you shortly, when I was putting on her attachments and she had lots of attachments, she was all over the chair. As you can see, there's a lot of attachments in this 30 aligner case. She was all over the chair when I was removing the excess composite. So I haven't even numbed her yet. I was gonna introduce Propel the following day or two or three days later, I don't recall at the time, but in watching how she was reacting from me just polishing her attachments, I called an audible at the line of scrimmage, basically. And the audible basically was, I said, hey, you know what, if she's like this when I'm polishing her attachments, I can only imagine what she's gonna be like when I try numbing up her mouth and having her sit still during treatment. So what did I do? I gave her a V-Pro5. And so far, she's on about a liner eight in the case. She's, tra she's tracking beautifully. Um, you'll tune in down the road. You'll go to one of my lectures for Propel down the road and you'll see uh, how wonderful a case, but I'm very, very calm that this case is gonna finish on time. So let's look at the messaging again. All right, so when it comes to profitability, and when it comes to what do I do with these devices? Okay, do I charge for these devices? How much do I charge for these devices? Well, that's a personal call. Some people include in treatment with the argument being, hey, you know what? I wanna get the case done on time. If I can get this case done, without any refinements, without any additional liners, this is gonna be really profitable. It is worth its weight in gold for me to introduce mops on those difficult teeth or mops an entire arch if I choose to, or I wanna give the patient a V-Pro5. I'm not even gonna charge them because I wanna get the case done on time. Second choice you have, the middle choice is, I'm basically gonna cover my costs. All right, I don't need to make any money in this. I'm making money on my case. I just want the case done on time, but I don't wanna give it away. Your third choice is, hey, there's a profit center for me, all right? I can charge $1,000 for this. I can charge $1,200. I could charge $1,800. I could charge $800, whatever it is. If I'm doing mops, I can charge my fee, whatever I choose to. Generally, one set of mops gets you through the entire course of treatment if it's a six-month case. I can charge high-frequency vibration. 
pick my poison, what fee do I want to charge for that to make it a profit center? If I got a real difficult case, maybe I'll do both. And that is where you need to decide at the end of the day if you want to make it a profit center in terms of actual dollars coming into your pocket, or you want to cover your costs, or your profit is going to be, I'm going to be done on time and that's good enough for me. So, little summation here. MOPs give you targeted stimulation, faster bone remodeling and orthodontic tooth movement, root protection. It's simple in office. The patient doesn't have to do anything. It's more predictable movement. You're decreasing bone density. So if it's rotating a difficult tooth or if it's an entire arch that you want to stimulate with MOPs, you can do it. It doesn't matter. More is better. Don't forget that. As far as your high frequency vibration, it supports active treatment and retention. It makes your treatment more predictable. It reduces pain. It reduces or eliminates refinement, causes faster bone remodeling and orthodontic tooth movement. While you have the device on during treatment, it decreases bone density and allows more predictable movement. When you use it at the end of treatment, it will cause a increase in bone density and allow those teeth to tighten up. An elderly woman goes to the dentist and the dentist says she needs Invisalign. She says, but what if I die tomorrow? Suddenly she hears this booming voice and this voice says, you're going to live another 20 years. She's okay, great, I'll get the Invisalign. After the treatment is over, she walks out the door, gets hit by a car, goes up to heaven. God, she says, you told me I was going to live another 20 years. He says, I'll tell you the truth. I didn't recognize you. <laughs> okay, so that was Marilyn. Believe it or not, she was an 82-year-old Invisalign patient, um, an Invisalign start. Um, there was no age limit to patients. Patients want to line their teeth. Patients want to take their teeth out of trauma. When you get older, your bone density changes. This is a device that we often introduce in some of our senior patients. So we are right on time right now. And we are ready to take your questions. Questions are very easy for you to do. Just type into the chat box. I will see your questions as they come up. And Larry gives me our first question of the night. If you had to choose only one between MOP or VPRO5 for a case with some blue movements, which would you pick? Hmm, good question. So I'm going to uh, answer your question, and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm going to do it hopefully in a way you like. One, you got to look at your patient. That's part of the way to do it. Um, if I had to do, you know, is my patient going to be a compliant patient, use VPRO5 every night? Do I have multiple, multiple uh, blue movements in the case? then I'd maybe lean towards a V Pro 5. Um, as I showed you that very difficult case with that narrow arch, that was a 100% mop case. I had a highly motivated patient. He was gonna do everything I told him to do. He had no problem sitting through injections. He had no problem me performing the mops. Um, so he did great. Um, to be honest with you, I would have done in retrospect, I didn't need to do it. That would have been a good mop V Pro 5 combination case for both, but I was very confident in the mops. Um, I would say the difficulty of the movement would also be a factor I would use. If it would be something like I had to extrude a canine, um, or maybe I was into a case twice already and I really wasn't seeing a certain tooth move, then I'd le lean towards the mops. Um, I know you're asking me to, to make a call for you on it. There's too many variables to just answer that, you know, as a black and white case. Larry, I wish I could tell you, um, oh, definitely go V Pro 5 or definitely go MOP, but I think you need to look at the case, look at the patient, look at how many uh, movements are involved in terms of those blue or advanced movements, and uh, that really will help you which way you want to go at the end of the day. The thing I want to stress to you, though, don't let cost factor into making your decision. Okay, V Pro 5 runs more than a MOP does at the end of the day, but you know what? If that's the right device for the case, great, then that's all you need to do. So I would say, I, I hope I'm answering your case. You could, you could uh, type back in if, I, if there's more specifics involved in the case. I'm happy to answer them for you. But uh, basically, I'd say it involves the case. It involves you know, the patient and the teeth that are being moved, which, what are the movements involved? So that's what I do. If it's one, two 
teeth that I think are questionable, I'll go mop. If it's multiple, multiple teeth, like I showed you that second case with that 30-year-old lady, that's a V-Pro 5. So I hope that answers your case. Any other questions? If bilateral mop is required, would you give a bilateral mandibular block? Richard, absolutely. And the reason I would do that, not have any fear of it, what do oral surgeons do when they take out uh, number 17 and number 32? We can give uh, bilateral bo uh, blocks if we need to, mandibular blocks. Um, if it's anterior teeth, you might just go uh, with a mental block or an infiltration in that area. So uh, the answer is I, ha I would have no problem doing um, if I'm working in the molar areas, giving a bilateral mandibular block, um, but you do have some alternatives if it's anterior, like I said, or premolars, uh, you can get away with a mental block. So hope that answers your question. Any other questions? You guys must be hungry and want to go to dinner or go to bed, depending on where you're at. We'll give it another minute or two, but there's nothing like silence on a, a webinar, so I hate to do that for you. It's very simple, like I said, just type in your questions in the chat box. Um, again, I'm gonna emphasize two things as we're checking and waiting to see if any other questions are coming in. Um, I'm very big on knocking down barricades. And one of the, the big things that people have when they get afraid of clear aligners is they say, oh, Invisalign doesn't work for me. Well, that's baloney, and this line doesn't work for you. You may have chose the wrong case to get started, or more importantly, you didn't use some of those uh, adjunctive services that you have available to you to help the case be more predictable at the end of the day. And that's your job to look at the case. And it may not even show up as a, a modern or advanced movement of the case. You may have a history of going, you know what, mandibular interior teeth, rotation, I just, you know, I, I have some issues with tracking on those with my patients. What can I do to make it more predictable? And here you have it. What can make it more predictable? A little anesthesia, a five-minute procedure, a couple of mops in the area, and you're done. Or, you know what? I'm going to have the patient. I'm going to sell them a V-Pro 5 in the case. I'm going to put it into my fees. I'm going to make it more predictable. I, I want to make you fully aware of something, too. When those two cases that I showed you uh, in terms of that real narrow arch and the young lady that I did the V-Pro 5 on, I don't give the patient the option in terms of they can do the case with it or they can do the case without it. It's The case is only going to be done with Propel or a V-Pro 5 in the case. That's the only way I'm going to take the case. And if they say, oh, no, I want to save the $750 or whatever the fee is, I will not do the case unless they're doing it my way because I want predictability. Uh, next question I got is, do you feel mops would be beneficial for mandibular incisor intrusion? Um, absolutely, help soften up the bone. I don't know how much you're intruding the tooth. You can usually get up to two millimeters of predictable tooth intrusion. Um, if you're using bite ramps, that's very important with Invisalign to use bite ramps and to indicate on your prescription that you want to intrude those teeth but certainly a, a mop would absolutely help you intruding those teeth. So mops are good for intruding, especially mandibular incisors. Uh, next question, let me read. It sounds like you feel V-Pro5 is just as effective as a mop. I've always felt that movements are easier with mops, but you have to shed some light that I might want to use V-Pro for some more difficult cases when a patient would tolerate both equally. Um, yes. Um, I definitely believe that uh, a V-Pro 5 is just as effective as a mop, depending on the case and the tooth movement involved. Um, mops, you know, give you a, a more immediate result. You don't have to worry about patient compliance. Oh, they're supposed to use it every night for five minutes. Very simple, very easy. But again, you know, going back to that previous question is, uh, you know, which one would I prefer given if I had to pick one? Well, if I know my patient's very, very, very compliant, I have no problem using VPRO5. Uh, I'll give you an example of a case that I'm doing right now that I had very simple mandibular uh, incisor rotation and uh, put the right attachments on the teeth. The patient the first go round wasn't very compliant, um, but uh, the second time around he swears he was very compliant. So I looked at him and said, okay, if you're very compliant and you're very different than the first go round, 
then we need to introduce something different into the case. I won't charge you for an additional refinement like I did the first time because you weren't compliant. All I'm going to do is charge you $500 to, to do some propel in the area, some mops in the area, because that way I know I've done everything I can. I've decreased the bone density, and uh, in decreasing the bone density, I've made the movement much, much more predictable, and I'm going to be in and out of that case in a half a dozen aligners with nothing to worry about. So. Hope that answers your question. Kelly, thanks for the uh, compliments. Okay, good to hear from you. I'm glad you're tuning in. Okay, we've got a couple more minutes. Uh, we'll give it two more minutes so we don't have to have any silent airtime at the end of the day. Okay, but uh, it looks like we're wrapping up pretty good here right now. I hope you guys um, learned today um, how it's very, very important. Keep your focus on finishing those cases. Um, do it right, please. Um, you will you will get articles and journals, and I haven't seen any yet, but I'm sure they exist, of doctors who decided to take high speeds to that alveolar bone and take a shortcut and save some money, and it's not going to give them the effect that they need to at the end of the day, and somebody's going to throw an infection or get like a osteoradial necrosis or something that just doesn't heal in that area, and at the end of the day, uh, they're going to be put on a pedestal and they'll be the victim of a very large, unfortunate, unfortunate malpractice situation, and you don't have to do that. That's not worth it at the end of the day. And if you've done it in the past and haven't had trouble and think you're having more predictable move, tooth movement, um, I would argue that. The people at Propel would argue that. And we're happy for you to, to sit down and look at some of the literature and see how effective mops are and vibration are when you're introducing them into your cases. So I wanna thank you all for tuning in tonight. I uh, hope you had a great day, a great Tuesday, and you have a great tomorrow. Uh, contact your Propel representative, and uh, if you need them to come into your office and demonstrate anything for you, but please, please, please understand those refinements are not free. You want to reduce them, do everything you can at the end of the day, and uh, I hope to see you out on the lecture circuit come up and uh, tell me how effective that Propel and MOPS have been for you. So everybody have a wonderful night, and. Uh, We'll see you uh, down the road. Have a good night, everybody.